yellow Like you eating a big bowl of jello never stop working hard. Each day I feel I have to improve. Hard work, determination, I've got to keep pushing myself. I remember when I was five years old, talking in trash cans on my knees, waiting for that day I would be able to really do it. And then one day, it happened. I was in the ninth grade. It was a JV game, and I was only five foot eight. Now, in practice, I've never been able to get up that high. But the adrenaline was pumping, and I just took off. It all happened so fast. I wasn't quite sure what I'd done. But you know, I just really loved that feeling. Hi, my name is Michael Jordan. I want you to take a trip with me and discover the secrets that I've known for many years. That man was truly destined to fly. A young man. With dreams of greatness on the baseball diamond. Possessing the burning desire that could get him there. These are visions of what might have been. But reality has never looked so good. Yesterday's Little League hero has become today's most captivating athlete. His elegance on the court has transformed the game into an art form. A relentless competitor who fears no one. He overwhelms the opposition, patrolling the airways with a reckless abandon. He is an unyielding defender with uncanny instincts. Thriving in adversity, he will always find a way. And while strength is usually found in numbers, his comes from within. I'll tell you a story that I think summed the whole thing up. We was playing uh, Chicago in Salt Lake. They switched and put John Stockton on it, and he turned around and dunked on Stockton. So some guy got up and almost followed him down the sidelines, and said, hey, Jordan, pick on somebody your own size. Next time down the floor, he dunked on Mel Turpin, and went over and looked at the guy and said, was he big enough? His astounding ability seems boundless. The guy literally is embarrassing the league. He's that good. He's a phenomenal player. Uh, there isn't anything he can't do. Michael in from the left side, jammed it right over Rollins. Michael Jordan. And in his quest for perfection, he takes the game to new heights. The perfect player to me is probably 6'5", 6'6", 200 pounds, uh, jump like Michael Jordan, wear number 23 like Michael Jordan, and, and shoot like and play like Michael Jordan. Jordan into the front court. In on Neil Brandner. No! Oh, what a dunk by Dale Ellis. Off to the right. Jordan on the drive. Falls down underneath. Oh, 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 oh. oh, oh. Luce McDaniel had it stolen by Jordan. Michael's got a break away. This game is over. The lead pass to Michael Jordan. This spells trouble. Oh, oh, oh. Jordan, who has it on the break, driving all the way in, oh, God, an unbelievable ball, he put it in and it goes. But greatness sometimes springs from humble beginnings. As a 5'11 sophomore, young Michael was noticeably absent from the varsity team. Yes, I'm the, I'm the coach who uh, cut Michael as a sophomore. We did it because we thought at the time 
it was the best thing for him and for our basketball program. He was still growing, he was a good ball player, but we didn't think he was good enough yet to, to really make the contribution on the bossy that, that uh, we felt we needed. Determined to prove his coach wrong, Michael worked harder than ever, growing four inches and improving dramatically over the next two years. He would shatter all of Laney's scoring records while leading the Buccaneers to their first ever conference championship. The high school All-American chose the University of North Carolina, and academic advice was soon to follow. And I told him to go into math, but that's where the money was. <laughs> which I think's hilarious. <laughs> he probably does too. <laughs> Concerned about Michael's future employment, Laney's principal wanted him to attend. Air Force academies are always a very excellent ch educational choice and certainly a commitment to the armed forces would have given him employment after college. This one-man squadron would eventually form his own Air Force, Air Jordan. Chapel Hill home of the University of North Carolina, a school rich in basketball tradition. Initially, skepticism arose as to whether Michael could excel at the college level. Coming up in high school, I wasn't that known as a basketball player. I wasn't that known until I came to, to North Carolina, and no one in Wilmington thought I could really step in and play a lot of time. I mean, everyone felt I was going to go to North Carolina, sit on the bench for four years, and then come back home and work at a local gas station or something. But no one anticipated that fame would come so quickly. The time, 18. Jordan, Michael Jordan. In the 1982 championship game versus Georgetown, the freshman had delivered to Coach Smith his first national title. And a star was born. And a lot of people didn't know I existed until I got here. So when I hit that shot, I felt like I was different. You know, I, I won a national championship. I think the people started to recognize my talents more, and I started to get more publicity in that sense. So I think that shot really put me on the map, if, if you want to say. Michael's winning basket propelled him into the national spotlight, and a new aura of confidence was apparent to all. Michael really did what has improved considerably between his freshman and sophomore year. He grew a couple inches, he matured uh, physically, and uh, just became a sensational player. He was very inconsistent as a freshman, but he's one of the most competitive ones we've ever had in our drills. He wanted to get better, and then he had the ability to get better. There's a steal by Doherty. Here comes uh -oh. Michael Jordan. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Matt Doherty passes to Jordan. I guess that is a pretty fitting end to the ballgame. Jordan, look at that! Looking for Jordan. Oh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. In practice, Michael barraged his teammates with his game time moves. We always went, had to go against each other every day and trying to stop him was just, it was a joke really. Of course we had to force him baseline, he'd get around the baseline, it was a dunk, and then you go in the locker room after uh, practice and he would remind you all night long. Jordan coasted through his sophomore campaign, capturing player of the year honors. But the pressures of a number one ranking hindered his play early in his junior season. The excessive expectations had him trying too hard to please others, and he needed guidance to redirect his focus. Coach Smith could notice it. I mean, uh, he showed me film from my sophomore year and the beginning of my junior year, and it looked like a, a totally different person. It made me see exactly what success had done to me, and I was able to deal with it from that point on. I remember we were playing NC State, and I cut my hair. I was ball-headed. I said, I'm washing away with the way I started off with the season. I set my own expectations of myself, and I just started to play better basketball. Michael would rebound beautifully. About 14. Rebound! Dominate the competition, and go on to lead the ACC in scoring. But after being named the top collegiate in the nation for the second consecutive season, he made the difficult decision to walk away from Chapel Hill and forego his senior year. Well, to tell you the truth, I really just decided, uh, uh, I guess, uh, an hour and a half ago. I didn't know I was, you know, 50-50, and you know, I talked to Coach this morning, and, you know, uh, you know, he helped me, and my parents helped me, and, uh, you know, everything look, looks bright for me, and, and you know, it's, uh, I think the future holds. Uh, 
uh, hopefully the best for me. And I just, you know, I felt that would be better for me to to start now uh, while I'm young. Although Michael went hardship, he returned to Carolina the following summer to get his degree. More immediately, he was about to become the cornerstone of a rebuilding Chicago franchise. The Chicago Bulls picked Michael Jordan of the University of North Carolina. In preparation for the Los Angeles Olympics, Jordan led Team USA to a 9-0 record in a series of exhibitions against NBA talent. What I like most about Mike was the fact that, that, that like everybody, he had some lapses in, in play and, and how hard he played, and yet all you had to do with him was go up and, and take him by the arm and say, Michael, you're not playing as well as you can play. He just kind of look at you and grin and say, I know. And he'd go out and play harder, and he'd play better. And you put his willingness to compete with his athletic ability and his basketball skill, and that's why I simply uh, have always said, since having had a chance to be around him, that he's just the best player I've ever seen play. Named team co-captain by Bobby Knight, Michael made it clear he would have no problems with the fiery coach. And he wants the best for his players, and you know, really, that's somewhat similar to Coach Smith, except for the language. But you know, I can get up with that. <laughs> when the moment arrived, Michael was all business. The 23rd Olympiad would provide the form. The glory of a gold medal was paramount. And playing against the rest of the basketball world, Michael would tower above the competition. The United States had a team deep in talent. But Jordan would emerge as the undisputable driving force. With Michael leading the team in scoring, the Olympic squad routed the opposition by an average margin of 33 points en route to a stellar 8-0 record. The gold medal game versus Spain was no different. Spearheading the blowout was the skinny kid from Wilmington, whose Olympic brilliance will always be remembered. That was a special moment for me because uh, I guess I can go back to his childhood days and uh, he always said to me, one day I'll be Olympian. And I said, yeah, sure. And then to win the uh, gold medal, I mean, it was so thrilling. It was one of my special moments. And I always remember when he put it around my neck, uh, that was a special bond that I guess will be with me and members that no one would take away from me. It was in this house in Wilmington, North Carolina, where Michael's parents taught him the values of hard work and how to set goals to achieve his dreams. But it was his daily battles in the backyard with his older brother Larry that fueled his competitive drive. We used to play an awful lot, you know, we would play every day, and uh, I would normally beat him. The thing that, that always drove Michael crazy was that Larry would beat up on him so much. And I think that he, uh, he really got competitive playing his own brother. So he really helped me create some determination in myself to, to beat him. If I could beat him, I felt I could beat anybody. And finally, when I started to grow and my skills started to catch up with my height, uh, I started to beat him convincingly. Equally deserving of the credit is someone who showed him how to put it through the hoop. Keep your eye on the rim and concentrate. <laughs> like this. Like that? No, like this. <laughs> like this. Like this. Like this, Michael. And now give it some razzle-dazzle. That's my mom. Obviously, Michael derives his athletic ability from his mother's side. But how does one explain his 6'6 frame? After all, there hasn't been a Jordan over six feet in recent memory. I joke with my mother all the time about that. Uh, 
I always, often answer how tall was the mailman or the milkman. Everybody before they talk to me, like maybe I talk to someone on the phone, they go, well, how tall are you? You know, I go, oh, I'm only 5'5", five, five. and they go, but how is Michael so tall? Who else is tall? And I go, Michael's the only tall one in my family, and my dad's next, but he's only six feet. And they go, well, why is that? I go, I don't know, but I've seen the milkman, and I know it's not him. I've thought about that often, and I've come to one conclusion. Occasionally, you'll meet people that you look at and you just know that they were born to do one thing. And God looked at Michael and knew that this kid would starve if he had to work. So he says, I better make an athlete out of him. So is it true Mr. Jordan would find Michael hanging from his chin-up bar, stretching himself in an attempt to grow taller? I tried to do that. I, wanted to, I always wanted to be seven feet. And I never forget that tall. I tried it a few times. I saw it on TV a few times on the Brady Bunch or something like that that I saw that and I tried to do it and it didn't, I don't think it worked, uh, but I'm tall, so it may have. And your dad's reaction when he found out? He thought I was nuts. And that's exactly what he drove NBA defenses. Staging an aerial display, the rookie left fans awestruck collecting rave reviews at every stop. Often unbelievable when running the floor. He was virtually unstoppable in the air. Air Jordan had landed, and the NBA would never be the same. More than just a score, the emerging superstar sought to create for others. Quickly becoming Chicago's leader, he sparked the Bulls with his contagious intensity. Michael was high-stepping his way to instant legend status and having a great time along the way. They have outscored the Bucks nine to nothing here. Oh, 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 oh. Here comes Mr. Jordan is right. Everyone was trying to catch a glimpse of Jordan's high wire act. And he sent no one home disappointed. Chicago was his. The Bulls were a hot ticket. And Michael was heir apparent to the title of NBA's premier ambassador. In only a year's time, he journeyed from Chapel Hill to Olympic stardom. With a schedule so hectic, he had to wait for a Bulls West Coast road trip to pick up the College Player of the Year award which fit nicely alongside his next trophy, the NBA Rookie of the Year. Injury. An athlete's worst nightmare. Not even the NBA's most celebrated performer can escape its wrath. In only the third game of his second professional season, Michael would hobble to the bench in great pain. But no one could foresee that almost an entire season would be lost. Trying to adjust was not an easy task. Mentally, it was very hard for me to deal with because I wanted to get out and play. I was, I was so used to playing whenever I wanted to play. And here I couldn't play because of my injury. At first, the four-week prognosis was something Michael could deal with. But as the weeks turned into months, his frustration mounted with each passing game. The unfamiliar role of bystander had Michael at wit's end, and he needed to find a way to lessen the pain. Seeking comfort, the legendary Tar Heel returned to Chapel Hill. It was in this gym where the rehabilitation process would begin. Michael renewed his fervor for the game as his foot continued to get stronger. Once I got that confidence and so the feeling in the foot was getting stronger as I continued to play. Uh, it wasn't nothing anyone could have said that could stop me. 
But concerned about re-injury, the Bulls wanted to delay his return. A rigorous training regimen was implemented to secure full recovery. Patiently, Michael waited for his day to come. Checking into the game for the Bulls. He's back! Number 23, Michael Jordan! Everybody told me, you're a fool for playing. You should go home and relax and come back next season and see what happens. There's the double. Jordan, down. Michael! Jordan was playing better than ever. But fearing a career-ending setback, Chicago's coaching staff limited his play to only seven minutes a half. The star's patience was extended once again. Once I got that opportunity to play, I felt I had to prove to people that I knew what I was doing. I was a confident individual. I wasn't doing anything to jeopardize my career. I really felt that I was healthy, I was back, and I wanted to make the playoffs. I always said that if, once I'm in Chicago, if I have anything to do with it, to make the playoffs each, each year. Dateline, the playoffs. Mighty Boston sought their 16th world championship. And for one afternoon, the time-honored legacy of Celtic pride would be confronted by the wave of the future. Time restraints were lifted. And Michael would make the most of his opportunity. A constant presence at both ends of the floor he single-handedly dismantled the Celtic attack. Rendered helpless by his offensive onslaught, the core of the Celtics all tried their hands at stopping him, but without success. Even the most legendary of them all was helpless as Michael continued to score at a frantic pace. Absent for 62 games, Jordan sought retribution for lost time. On the verge of shattering a single-game scoring record, there was nothing that would stand in his way. Michael on the drive across the lane. Turnaround shot. Got it! 63 for Jordan. A new NBA record has been set in the Boston Garden. I'm on my, my game, and I'm really on like I was in Boston. I don't think there's too many people that can stop me. I don't think there's anybody that can stop me. And once I got off to a good start, I just it felt like I couldn't stop. You know, I, I could run for days. And not really stop. I just wish that the game didn't have to stop. We could play, play on and on. We'd probably still be playing now the way I felt. This historic feat secured a place in basketball annals. But for others, the entire experience since Michael's return was unsettling. But the first few games, obviously, uh, I was on the edge of my seat most of the time uh, because, uh, you know, God forbid something would have happened. And I'll feel much more comfortable uh, this summer because Michael's going to play a lot of golf and, uh, and very little basketball. Sir. We'll take her. We take it. Well publicized is Michael's passion for golf and the seclusive surroundings that the sport affords. I mean, it's peaceful. Uh, you're out here on the course where you can't get any phone calls. You know, people can't bother you. It's really a relaxing situation. No, that's short. Yeah, that's there. That's short. You don't compete against the next guy who's playing with you. You compete against the course. <laughs> One day you can shoot. 74, next day you can shoot 84. That's the game of golf. You know, you never really can conquer it. You can only contain it and hold it for a little while, and then it just goes. The mind comes into this game so much. Uh, it comes into basketball, too, but sometimes your skills can over, overcome the, the mind a little bit. But uh, in golf, if your mind's not in it, you can forget it. The free throw situation, you know, it's, it's a similar. Putting and free throws is the same. And consistency and, and the skill of you know, going through the same motion every time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we'll take I take that. That's the ticket. That's it. That's the ticket. <laughs> Woo! Well, I have played golf with Michael before, and uh, the uh, he's probably it's probably the only time that he keeps his tongue in his mouth, uh, other than when he's wagging it, uh, telling me how good he is. Other than that, uh, I just really enjoy taking money from him. Smart Money says it doesn't happen too often. Oh, 
the hole. I take it. Perhaps a career after basketball is in the making. That's a jump shot. Now that's a jump shot. But for Michael Jordan, the future is now. He lives and plays with style and charisma. And just may be the most identifiable athlete in all of sports. First, his attire. Baggy shorts and the wristband on the forearm. And then there is the ever-present tongue. As far as I'm, I can remember, it originated from my granddad. My granddad uh, stuck his tongue out and I'm um, working on my car or something around the house. I find myself going, you know, really concentrating. Like father, like son. Michael's distinct on-court fashion has even caught the eye of the world of modeling. With his striking good looks and his charming demeanor, the megastar is a natural. transcended the realm of sports, Michael has been quoted by innumerable product lines and in the process has become one of the hottest commodities in the advertising industry. With his exposure at an all-time high, Michael can go nowhere without attracting attention. Though the marketing of Michael Jordan has become big business, he has kept his sense of humor. Even when attending to business, he always seems to manage to have a good time. You got it. You got it. That he is only the ninth athlete to be offered a place on the Wheaties box is a true measure of his stature. But fame and fortune have truly not changed Michael. And despite his meteoric rise in popularity, he has retained a firm grip on his sense of perspective. Although Jordan spends a good deal of time in the air, his values are firmly down to earth. I was taught right from wrong. I was always involved in the boys club when I was smaller. So I was able to, to step up and be an outspoken person against things that I didn't want to be involved in. So don't blow it. Don't do drugs. If you're doing it, stop it. Get some help. McDonald's wants you to give yourself a chance. A chance to find out all the wonderful things you really can be. And so do I. I could have easily had parents that didn't care and let me hang out late nights and you know hang out with the wrong crowd, but uh, I wasn't brought up that way, and it was easy for me to, to, to distinguish away from the environment that I wanted to be with and the environment that I didn't want to be with. Michael is like a Pied Piper for fans of all ages, and fortunately, he leads them in only positive directions. I was always taught never forget where you came from. Uh, my parents, if, if I changed as a person, they would be the first ones to tell me that, and they haven't told me yet, so I'm doing well. But I always wanted to be an easygoing guy. My personality is that uh, I'm outgoing, I love people, I love being around people, I love kids. So if I didn't have the personality to do it, it would be tough. But my personality fits 
uh, this mold very easily. You know, I don't want to be isolated from people. I just think when you isolate yourself from people, then you feel that you're better than people. I don't feel that I'm better than you or the next person. But I think in society, sometimes they view you to be better than the next person. You know, I don't think that's fair, but you know, there's a lot of things in society that's not fair. You just have to live by it. And uh, I wish everybody could be viewed equal. Uh, but I don't think it's ever going to be that way. No sight inspires more fear in would-be defenders than this offensive juggernaut. If I get the ball, you have mercy of whatever I want to do. There's nothing that you can say or do about it if I'm on my game. The feeling is you own the ball, you own the game, you own the guy who's guarding you. You can actually play him like a puppet. Few puppet masters apply their trade as skillfully as Michael. He simply takes over a game whenever he chooses. When I'm playing really good, that's the feeling that I have. An unparalleled shot maker, his offensive repertoire is limitless. Regarded as the greatest scorer since Wilt Chamberlain, his peerless athleticism makes him the most formidable weapon on the court today. Jordan attacks the basket as though possessed. and he lights up NBA scoreboards at a dizzying pace. Not solely a scoring machine, Michael dominates defensively as well, bringing a cerebral approach to shutting down his opponents. First, I, I observe how he handles the ball. If he has great handle with the ball, then it's going to be more difficult for me to, to steal the ball from him. But if he doesn't, then you know, it's different ways. You know, I can trick him one way and, and reach around him, or you know, just go straight at him and, and go for the steal. But if he handles the ball very well, you almost have to sneak up on him. Initially famous for his offensive brilliance, in a sense, Michael did sneak up on the NBA defensively. But in 1988, his tenacious play earned him Defensive Player of the Year honors and the recognition he so richly deserved. To say Michael Jordan doesn't play defense uh, is ridiculous. Uh, interestingly enough, great players never want to be one-dimensional. And I think the one thing that bothered Michael more than anything else is that he got no credit for his defense. Well, it's been a goal of mine to really get that recognition that I won on the defensive end. You know, right now I'm still getting the, most of the recognition on the offensive end because I'm averaging 34 points. But um, the defensive end is where I really want some recognition because it, it takes a little bit off of that all offense and, you know, averaging 37 points or whatever, leading the league and scoring. Uh, that, that's an image that I don't, I don't want to project, that I just shoot and I just score and I'm just an offensive player. That's something that I don't want to be remembered as. People ask me, you really think you can fly? I say, yeah, for a little while. It may be a split second, but it's flying.
And I think people are amazed by that because they wish they could do it. And it makes me continue to work hard to, to keep making these people dream and, and enjoy their dreams. Michael's Airborne Ballet is very much about dreams. Dreams of unearthly grace. Of unrestrained freedom. Of majestic power. Dreams of flight. For Michael and his fans, basketball is a way of sharing the fantasy. Like a small group of aerial voyagers, Michael evokes images of the stratosphere, the visions which dreams are made of. Michael may be able to achieve the unbelievable on the basketball court, but to those who look up to him, he is a very real person who possesses the rare gift to both capture their imagination and touch their hearts. He's just, uh, uh, if I must say, again, I'm proud of him. He is my son, but he is a good person. And he's a pretty good basketball player, too. Entrancing to watch, his performances capture the gamut of emotions. No one in the stands is more moved than his family. When he comes home, I talk to him just like he's one of my boys. And I can't get in my mind that he's in a different but when I walk into the stadium and 18,000 people are standing there hollering and screaming, sometimes you want to cry, you break out with goosebumps, and you just get all of these eerie feelings. And naturally, you have to be very, very proud. And they may never have been prouder than during the 1988 All-Star Weekend, when their son capped two days of thrilling his hometown Chicago fans by soaring away with the slam dunk title and the game's MVP trophy. Throughout his life, Michael Jordan has met all obstacles head on. One can only imagine what challenges he has yet to conquer. This is something to savor as we look forward to more spectacular moments from the world's most breathtaking athlete.
quest for perfection, he takes the game to new heights. The perfect player to me is probably 6'5", 6'6", 200 pounds, uh, jump like Michael Jordan, wear number 23 like Michael Jordan, and, and shoot like and play like Michael Jordan. Jordan on the drive, falls down underneath. Oh, 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 oh. Paul Roos McDaniel had it stolen by Jordan. Michael's got a break away. This game is over. The lead pass to Michael Jordan. This spells trouble. Oh, ho, oh, oh. Jordan, who has it on the break, driving all the way in. Oh, Scott, an unbelievable ball. He put it in and it goes. But greatness sometimes springs from humble beginnings. As a 5'11 sophomore, young Michael was noticeably absent from the varsity team. Yes, I'm the I'm the coach who uh, cut Michael as a sophomore. We did always find a way. And while strength is usually found in numbers, his comes from within. I tell you a story that I think summed the whole thing up. We was playing uh, Chicago in Salt Lake. They switched and put John Stockton on it, and. He turned around and dunked on Stockton. So some guy got up and almost followed him down the sidelines. Hey, Jordan, pick on somebody your own size. Next time down the floor, he dunked on Mel Turpin. And went over and looked at the guy and said, was he big enough? His astounding ability seems boundless. The guy literally is embarrassing the league. He's that good. He's a phenomenal player. Uh, there isn't anything he can't do. Michael in from the left side, jammed it right over Rollins. Michael Jordan. And in I've never been able to get up there. But the adrenaline was pumping, and I just took off. It all happened so fast. I wasn't quite sure what I'd done. But you know, I just really love that feeling. Hi, my name is Michael Jordan. I want you to take a trip with me and discover the secrets that I've known for many years. That man was truly destined to fly. A young man with dreams of greatness on the baseball diamond, possessing the burning desire that could get him there. These are visions of what might have been. But reality has never looked so good. Yesterday's Little League hero has become today's most captivating athlete. His elegance on the court has transformed the game into an art form. A relentless competitor who fears no one. He overwhelms the opposition, patrolling the airways with a reckless abandon. He is an unyielding defender with uncanny instincts. Thriving in adversity, he will all... Hello, black girl, eating a big bowl of jello. never stop working hard. Each day I feel I have to improve. Hard work, determination, I've got to keep pushing myself. I remember when I was five years old, dunking in trash cans on my knees, waiting for that day I would be able to really do it. And then one day, it happened. I was in the ninth grade. It was a JV game, and I was only five foot eight. Now in practice, 